everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the NASA SpaceX Crew-6 mission, a long-duration rotational mission to the International Space Station. Station Houston on Space 3 on 2 for Josh. Pausing for some comms at the moment. Go ahead on 2, David. All right, so starting off strong, right yeah. off the back. Right in the middle of the action. <laughs> Live view there of SpaceX Mission Control, uh, just right behind us, actually. Um, just some back and forth between the crew and the core. Um, and actually, right now, all four astronauts um, are in Dragon Endeavor. So those four um, dots around the center of that uh, forward hatch, those are where those forward Draco thrusters are. So there's four of those on top and then 12 service section Draco thrusters. But first, quick recap of how they got here. It started um, several hours ago, more than I guess would be about 28 hours ago. Uh, they suited up in uh, the ONC building at Kennedy Space Center. Uh, they rode out to pad 39A. They had a successful ingress. Of course, a liftoff from Kennedy Space Center, pad 39A at 12.34 a.m. Eastern time today, technically. I had to check the <laughs> clock. And we had successful stage one landing, of course, Dragon separation, nose cone deploy. We saw that nose cone uh, open uh, as Dragon was approaching the International Space Station. Uh, and we are getting ready for the uh, approach initiation burn uh, as they make their way to the International Space Station. That's right. And uh, in fact, we're uh, very close to the International Space Station at this point. This is actually one of the final burns that gets us into that approach ellipsoid. And that's really where joint operations begin with the International Space Station. That can communication we heard right off the top of our broadcast today uh, was the uh, the Capcom in Mission Control Houston talking with Josh Cassida, one of the NASA astronauts aboard uh, the International Space Station. It is really slow and controlled. Um, everything is conducted with uh, basically buy-ins from Johnson Space Center uh, in Houston, Texas, from SpaceX Mission Control here in Hawthorne, California. Of course, um, the International Space Station, the crew on board there already uh, is monitoring Dragon's progress, I'm sure, with great anticipation. They right. can't, can't wait to see their friends. <laughs> uh, but as they mentioned before, I think it was Josh mentioned, can't wait to see you because it means we get to go home soon. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but yeah, everything is slow and steady, super controlled, um, basically heavily choreographed among all, um, among all parties. Forward bulkhead Dracos are not used at this close to the International Space Station. They're used for some of the longer, bigger burns, uh, like the close burn and the close uh, co-elliptic burn. Deorbit burn. Deorbit burn mm -hmm. is a huge one. Yeah, they do. A, it's, it's like 12 minutes or yes. depending on the mission, but very, very long. <laughs> it's a yeah. lot of work. <laughs> and really, and, and that, uh, that reorients the station to... Uh, it's like a retrograde firing. So you fire it and it, it just slows the dragon down significantly um, before uh, the trunk separates and you have to reorient the dragon to position the heat, seal, heat shields properly for re-entry. But that's, yeah, definitely one of the longest burns uh, that, that are used for the forward bulkhead Dracos. But again, they're not used at this point. We keep the forward end of Dragon pointed towards the International Space Station for the navigation, the guidance navigation and control equipment that's at uh, the tip of the Dragon, uh, exposed by the open nose cone. Uh, so you've been noticing throughout this maneuver, swinging from waypoint zero all the way up to um, waypoint one, we've, we've been pointing the same direction. And that's part of the reason that the Draco engines have been firing to keep that position throughout this maneuver uh, of pointing directly towards the International Space Station. And that's why we've been getting fantastic views as well. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, C2V2 link reconfiguration complete. SpaceX Dragon copies and we'll see it as well. Thank you. That again, common communication for visiting vehicles. It allows uh, the Dragon and the International Space Station to talk to, 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 talk to each other. Hey, Josh, we expect you guys to be in block delta, step three or four of your approach and retreat monitoring at this point. SpaceX, 
Italian countries. We understand. Thank you. Crew sounded like we were going to get something there. Um, and um, everything, um, plenty of margin, two hours of margin um, uh, in, is available if necessary, um, although not expected to utilize. Um, so at this point in time, we're just standing by waiting for uh, some comms between core, um, SpaceX core crew. The uh, ground teams give them uh, the go to proceed past Waypoint 2 for docking. Uh, but in the meantime, they've pulled up their visors, they're relaxing. Um, but that, uh, once they close their visors, that gives them an extra layer of protection, uh, of pressurization just in, in the unlikely event of a cabin depress so that helm that uh, visor close will be an important uh, will be an important step before they actually proceed but right now they're just uh, again as Kate mentioned there's plenty of margin here uh, to allow the teams to continue to work this crew six is holding 20, uh, 20 meters away from the International Space Station at waypoint two uh, make hard capture with the International Space Station for docking. Um, it sounds like the crew was, um, uh, excuse me, it sounds like a manual software override was um, looking like the path forward um, and uh, no, no um, risk to vehicle health. All right, great news there from SpaceX Core indicating that Dragon has completed its docking sequence, the spacecraft. Uh... Dragon, this is Houston on the big loop. Sultan, Andre, Woody, and Steve. Aslan Mustafan, Dobri Pajalavat, and welcome to the International Space Station. Uh, from your training teams, your execution teams, and your friends and family, we're all so incredibly proud of you and are excited for your expedition. You guys uh, really are a living testimony that the ISS is a joint human effort and your unique crew uh, truly exemplifies that. Now let's work towards getting this hatch open so you can go hug your crewmates. And now that Dragon has completed the docking sequence, spacecraft must undergo a handful of checks before we will be able to open that hatch. The crew on board Dragon will now get a chance to get out of their suits uh, but more before moving into those hatch operations. That's right, and things will be picking up inside the station, too, as NASA's Josh Cassida gets the hatch on the station side ready to be opened, and then they start pressurizing that area known as the vestibule between the Dragon and the station hatches. So with Dragon fully docked, uh, that's going to do it for us here in Hawthorne, but our coverage for Crew 6 won't stop here. We're going to toss it over to Rob at Mission Control Houston to take us through the vestibule depressurization and hatch opening. And uh, when we'll see NASA astronaut Stephen Bowen, w uh, Woody Hoberg, along with United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan al Nayadi and Roscosmos cosmonaut Andrei Fedyaev float into the International Space Station. And now that Crew 6 has arrived, we're looking ahead to the return of Crew 5. We'll be taking you along as Nicole Mann, Josh Cassida, Koichi Wakata, and Ana Kikina return home after their long-duration stay aboard the station. Teams are assessing return dates, which will be announced on NASA.gov, so be sure to tune in as NASA and SpaceX bring you live coverage every step of their journey. Be sure to follow SpaceX and NASA on social media for real-time updates. So thanks again for watching. Go NASA, go SpaceX, and go Crew 6, and of course Crew 5, too. We'll now hand it over to Rob at the Johnson Space Center in Houston to continue sharing the mission as the crew prepares to board their home for the next six months, the International Space Station. For those of you watching on the SpaceX YouTube channel, please head over to NASA TV to follow the coverage live.